Welcome back. The Riva State Governor, Nyesa Mwike, has boasted that he is the most qualified person to rule Nigeria in 2023. The governor said no Nigerian possesses his credentials and leadership experience. He stated that being a minister as well as the governor of the oil-rich state gives him the needed experience to govern the country. He also debunked insinuations about him being the running mate to any presidential hopeful in the People's Democratic Party, the PDP. He further reiterated that power should return to the South next year, as this agrees with the position of Southern Governors, Chairman of the Board of the Trustees of the People's Democratic Party, the PDP. A week slammed those calling for the PDP presidential ticket to be zoned to the North. Now joining us to discuss this is Shugbe Eli, a legal practitioner in Darlington, Oji, former Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party in River State. Many thanks, gentlemen, for joining us this time around. All right, let me start with you, Darlington. Can you hear me? Yes, good evening. I can hear you very clear. All right, fine. Uh, the, uh, the governor of uh, River State, Nelson Wiki, I'm sure you are aware of the statement that is accredited to him. He is saying that he is the best candidate, you know, to run, you know, for the uh, presidency in 2023, he is a member of your party. Uh, uh, being um, a full-flagged uh, uh, member of the PDP, would you say Nelson Wike has all it takes to be the next governor of Nigeria come next year? Thank you. Good evening for giving me the privilege of expressing my view, mm. and I think the majority view of our people. I can confirm to you today that uh, from the stories we are hearing from the vineyard, uh, the governor of River State, His Excellency Chief Barita Ezemoye Sowike, is the most qualified person in PDP as of today. Reasons are very simple. The, for you to be the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, taking into consideration of the crisis that are in different political zones in Nigeria. You need one, a man with energy that is energetic enough to have the courage and the courage to take political decisions across line, irrespective of whose ought it goes. Again, River State is like a mini Nigeria where Bandra neighbors do not hear each other. Yet, this is a man that met River State in a war zone or a war situation and have been able to reduce crime and criminality to its barest minimum. At least, before, if you turn your, your radio or television, you hear one boss, two bosses being kidnapped in the river state. A man that stood free to fight. Another landmark achievement is this bone fire. If you understand what, they, what I mean by bone fire, this illegal refining of crude that is going on, that war is more than a fight against Boko Haram. Because this is fighting us, killing even those that is carrying it out. And this is a political season, yet a man has the courage to say, I will go after this cartel men to make sure that they will save the life of our people. Now, if you look at his developmental strife, the way he has carried himself since 29 of May 2015, and checking or assessing him as a minister, what he did in terms of the Amagiri schools, encouraging our people, because we understood that most people that carry out these dastardly acts is because they were not properly informed. And when a man is informed, he can take a proper decision. And he achieved that. If you also understand that he was a former local government chairman in this state and won all the awards he can think of. All right. As a chief of staff to the then former governor of River State, the brain boss behind the little achievement that was gotten by the last administration. And in this external, he has reformed and changed River State to a construction house. A man that has such quality, a man that has such courage, a man that has such capacity to take decisions across political lines is the type of person we need now. We do not need a, we don't, Nigeria don't need a, a big name that cannot bring food to our table. We need people that have a mind to take the decision. And one of the achievements we can is having is because this is a man that gives us job and go to the site himself. Nigeria right. does not need a president 
Excuse me, Nigeria do not need a president that will sit in their sorok alone. Nigeria All right, a president that will go out and get information himself. All right, Darlington, we'll still come back to you in as much as, uh, you know, all that you have said is still debatable. We still need to get uh, the average uh, reverse energy to actually, you know, uh, talk more about um, the state of affairs in reverse. But let us bring uh, uh, Shubay Eli into this conversation. Now, thanks for joining us, Shubay. Thanks for having me. All right, I'm sure you have been following the conversation. Uh, the, the spokesperson of uh, the PDP in reverse state seems to believe uh, would... The former spokesperson, rather, of the PDP in River State seems to believe uh, that the president uh, governor, Nisum Wiki, has all that it takes, you know, to govern this country come 2023. Do you agree that's on the one hand? And secondly, what qualities uh, do you think the next president of Nigeria should have? Uh, quickly, Nisum um, Wiki, as um, a Nigerian law and the constitution, is qualified by stage. age and education the wrong for president. However, he does not have the temperament and the requisite exposure to lead the nation as diverse as Nigeria. We're not talking about a town hall meeting here. We're not talking about some ethnic leadership here. We're talking about a Nigerian that has the right temperament, the body language, and the exposure to lead the nation like Nigeria. He does not have it. And for Nigeria, what do we need as for a president right now? We need a Nigerian president that is sellable across the nation. A Nigerian president whose name does not ring a bell for controversial reasons. We don't want the propagandists. With respect to my brother on that side, yes, I'm okay, so the himself the power to reverse people by propaganda. He used all sorts of means to demonize his principal and his boss, Ruta Mechi, to get into the heart of Jonathan and then go to the government house. That is not possible now. He has come back again to the same um, strategy to demonize Amechi with all sorts of stories. It has taken him seven years, seven whole years, to come up with all this drama he has seen in the last one or two weeks. It's from aircrafts being discovered and rediscovered, and they rediscovered again in Germany. So, all sorts of stories about that shit also. We are familiar to, with this area, we are familiar. Nigerians don't want that kind of temperamental character, we want the stable, calm headed, progressive minded and deliverable president. A president that is not biased. Come to River State and see what goes on here. This governor has spent eight percent of his time working for his people. For his people. And he throws in your face and tells others into all that's what the kind of Nigerian president wants. We want a pan Nigerian. One Nigerian who has the vision and the drive and the exposure, I keep emphasizing, the exposure to lead this country. We don't want an ethnic champion. We don't want a man who is vindictive and who demonize others without, without evidence. Uh, Eli, let me just butt in very quickly before I get, uh, uh, you know, Darlene to, to respond to some of um, these uh, points that you have made. Uh, you talked about exposure, but the, go uh, the governor of Rivers, they seems to believe that uh, he has some very wonderful, kind uh, track record, according to him, that he has been a governor and he has also been a minister. With all of that, he has the pedigree, you know, to run for the presidency in 2023. As, as minister, it was a colossal failure. Do you forget? As Minister of States, when, for political reasons, Jonathan, Professor Jonathan suspended and moved Professor Rukai to Ahmed, who was his principal, he took over as, as Provincial Minister of the Ministry. As he went on strike for one full year, couldn't resolve it. Until Jonathan appointed um, Ibrahim Shekau from, uh, uh, from Kano State. The next day, he resolved the crisis as soon as he went back to school. He couldn't manage the crisis. In terms of other major schools, where do you find them in the country? Where do you find them anywhere in the north? They're all audio schools. But I've seen him here as governor of River State. He has not paid one bus in one day. Not one scholarship was awarded in day. In fact, we drew the other students who are abroad for foreign studies back here. And told stories about they were there studying their philosophy and history. He did class one admission letter that showed that. He has not done that. Look at the health sector here, it's comatose. He had a commission more than a child hospital over a year ago. Actually, was the first place that was built there. That's the hospital that built. He only went there to complete. There are two hospitals that I started all over the place. He has not been able to activate one. In terms of infrastructure, I thought about building how many flyovers in the city of Potak alone. Has it broken the traffic deadlock? No. We are having gridlock all over the place. Okay. So, we are talking about, I hear the man who said they have a new reverse vision. Ask him in, to bring his new reverse vision and show us why he promised it would be flyovers. 
All right, so, so, so we'll let, we'll let um, Darlington um, respond right now. Uh, Darlington, I'm sure that you uh, ha have been following. Specifically, I want you to respond to issues uh, that uh, Eli has raised. Uh, he mentioned the um, temperament that the governor of a river state uh, seems to have issues with that. He talked about how he sold propaganda to the people during his campaign. And he said that Nigeria actually needs somebody who is stable and calm-headed. Darlington. Uh, uh, you, um, uh, unfortunately, even Eli, Eli himself knows that uh, knows that he's speaking from uh, bad faith. Uh, first of all, he talked about exposure. I don't know who will be more exposed than a man that has grown through the ranks, who was a local government chairman for two terms, who was the chief of staff to the former state government uh, governor, who was a minister, according to him, a junior minister. In the last administration of uh, uh, the former president, Gulo Jonathan, who is a two term governor, I do not understand what he meant by exposure. Could it be uh, that all these things does not go with wealth of experience and all of that? Let him check the records. As a local government chairman, Governor Wicke was outstanding that earned him the chairman of Argon. Now he talked about propaganda. I don't know how the propaganda was sustained. If President, former President Woodlock Jonathan was there in 2015, I do not understand whether he was still there in 2019 to make sure that he protects him. These are cries that we understand that the citizen has come again for them to continue to cry. But having said that, now he talked about the discovery of the aircraft uh, in Germany. Mm. The question is, is the aircraft parked in Germany? Who took it to Germany? The former chief of staff who was managing the aircraft, as he made a statement, if yes, in what line did he make a statement? So, and again, you will know that the day Governor Wickham went there to see the aircraft does not mean that that was the day it was discovered. He said he has already established, when they got a tip up, they've already established a relationship with the company. And perhaps that was the day they had a final date to meet and that money has been transacted based on what the information or the bills they are supposed to pay as regards to the mortgage and all of that. Now, you cannot talk about, can I like deny the fact that Wike as a governor under two years has flagged up completed some of the flyovers in Portacourt. Can he say that the road linking Portacourt to through Obrique that was the death trap and kidnap day in Portacourt before that he has been fixed? Can he say that the trans Calabari road is fixed up to 80%? Can he say that the uh, uh, element, uh, element road, sorry, has been fixed. All right, can, you that, can you say that the internal road in GMA right, has been fixed? Can you, I, can you say that the unity road in Okreka? Of in, course, uh, we'll, we'll uh, get Kalabari him to respond to all of those um, brother, issues that you've made. The truth of the matter is that here's a weekend is qualified. All right, thank you, Darlington. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, all right. Uh, by 2023, it's just next year, and Nigerians uh, would actually, you know, have um, the the right and, of course, um, you know, the the freedom to choose whoever they want. But let's just uh, round off uh, now with um, Shubhe Eli. So right now, if we're talking about the president, if you're talking about um, the right candidate, uh, you know, to govern Nigeria, is it just about exposure? Shouldn't we be talking about issues and someone who the citizens can actually trust? In a minute, please. So we we'll just round off, uh, Eli. We are talking, talking about competence. We are talking about measurable, verifiable achievements in government. We are not talking about propaganda. This man calls himself about Mr. Wiki. The man ran, 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 ran on a, a propaganda stretch to become governor. Or say else. Everything is just based in drama and propaganda every day. Now, if you pick a candidate like Rotem Mbechi as governor, our special candidate, have you seen what he has done with continuity in the in the in the railway sector? Have you seen what he has done with the airports? When he was providing the airports? Have you seen what he's doing still now with the with the midst of scarce resources? Have you seen this Nigerian network? It's all about Wiki being new government for two terms. For God's sake, how many has Amiji run as, as governor, as speaker, and as, as as minister? We have seen tangible achievements. I thought that Nigeria with temperament can. And you know, you need to have um, if you like, if you like, if we need to have somebody who is not only altruistic, but somebody who can who can break loose All right. and cause nothing. 
this man has a temperament, has a capacity, has exposure, he has a rich first as governor forum chairman, he showed enough character, he's a nationalist to the core, he does him mounting any kind of thing, running down any part of the country, he's a nationalist. For right, the people who want to have the Fulani man is an enemy, and that is a friend. No. Nigerians want a president who can unite this country. So we do. Who can put the forward, and the president promises to be that president. He's young, he's energetic, and he's forward-looking. All right, thank you, Eli, uh, you know, for your thoughts. Uh, we have been talking about um, 2023, who is, uh, you know, more qualified to govern the people to drive the machinery of government in next year. Is it the governor of uh, River State who says uh, he is the best candidate, the ideal candidate, or is it other Nigerians who would be coming out um, over time? And we've had them, Darlington Oji, join us, uh, former publicity secretary of the PDP in River State, and, of course, Chukbaye Eli, a legal practitioner. Thank you so much, gentlemen. All right, Very thank you for you. staying with us. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take. And here is my take. The burden of preserving democracy lies with all stakeholders, both government and the citizens. On the part of the government, it must prioritize good governance and civil liberties of the citizens because these intrinsic elements reinforce the foundation of democracy. Governments must also be deliberate in building strong institutions in their countries. Strong institutions serve as buffers to internal and external threats to a country. And for who is most qualified to rule Nigeria? In my opinion, the person should be the one to decide, or the people rather, the Nigerians, that is, should be the ones to decide that. With all the issues uh, the country is uh, going through, it wouldn't be too much if someone who truly understands the terrain has the wishes of the people in mind serves the country. The emphasis is on service. We don't need anyone who would come with I am in charge mentality to govern us because at the end of the day, leadership is a core to serve. Above all, we can only get that if we handpick those they want or the people pick the, those they want with themselves and governance and not necessarily some consensus arrangement and all the politics that come with it. My name is Justin Academia Plus Politics returns next week, but we'll leave you with the highlights of the week. Thank you so much. I'm not going to. I think we also need to go back to Saitolo Jumina and ask her how were those people from our local government excluded? We had World Congress, World, World Local Government and State Congress in 2020. It's going to two years now. During the, uh, the day we had we had World Congress, materials for the East and very local government were hijacked. So the two local government were cancelled. Congress did not hold there. Normally, the, the two Congress in local government ought to have uh, the, the, uh, ought to have been done like after. But unfortunately, only the me and the people went to court. They went to court, they tied the hands of the party. The party could not conduct Congress, Congresses in those two local governments. And up to now, the matter went from lower court, a big court, we still at the Supreme Court. So you don't expect the party to not go again. You are the one who, you are the one who went to court. So if, if you go to court and you are now suffering, you are now suffering the consequence of your action, you cannot, you cannot go about blaming people. So evidently, the great result, the great, the crazy uh, roots of about 40, 30 years ago can no longer be as it was. So uh, we are saying that what obtained about 60 years ago cannot ultimately obtain now. So we respect to grazing roots. As a matter of fact, we are in a modern civilization. Modern civilization does not really give room for somebody taking cattle from the north down to the record. Efforts will be made. These people, these boys that are taking these cattle, they should go to school. In fact, when you look at the nomad, uh, pastoral nomadism, it's only that took place about 100, 200 years ago. There's no civilized world today you find the people uh, following cattle. I was thinking by now some serious reforms 
would have been going on in the first source, especially after the Ensa's bitter experience we had. I was thinking the federal government would have learned its lessons and begin to see how we go straight into police reforms. It's a great deal of reform required in the national security sector, especially with the police. I don't see any serious reforms going on. Where yeah, I would have said maybe a lot of money is going on into training, this, that, and so on. No. In nearly every state where today we have uh, 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 the military complementing the effort of the police on ground, we know how much state governments are spending. And that's why some of the governors are saying, allow us to have our own police force. And then this money, uh, this entire money we are pumping in in the various at the various state level who go into our own police. The, the federal government could lay out the guidelines. We're not saying give them a free hand. Our politicians are not as mature as that. They are like children, they are like little kids with children. The NSAS uh, protest that took place around October of last year was uh, one of the best things to have happened to this country. The best really um, yeah one of the best in fact the finest finest uh, it's a phenomenon. It's an event that the police ought to have seized upon to begin some kind of internal cleansing mechanisms. But unfortunately, because of the fact that a lot of reactionary elements are embedded in the federal government, uh, a lot of talks, armed talks, were smuggled in, were brought in, that infiltrated that very wonderful protest that even happened for up to four days without any violent incident before uh, import, they imported foreign uh, foreign talks. When I say foreign, I don't mean no Nigerians. I mean people who were brought in from different parts of the country. A lot of them were brought in from Kano into Abuja. And uh, Nigerians, some of us who were at the protest, we saw the way some uh, SUVs, brand new SUVs, were actually driving these armed talks to the centers of this protest to interrupt the protest and to begin to kill, attack, you know, protesters. So the event itself is a very in fact, it's the first time in the history of this country that you have a large uh, uh, number of youth come out to say we are denouncing the modus operandi of the Nigerian police force that have been in place for ages. Issue of police brutality, issues of extrajudicial killings, the issues of extortion and Unfortunately, that event that happened, uh, it seems no lessons have been learned because so many of those manifestations of illegalities by the police are still going on because the event has come and gone. Nigerians need to learn a lot of positive lessons. We need to begin to uh, have some kind of a constructive partnership between the civil society and the police in its practical applications. We need to Clean up the police. The policing mechanisms in Nigeria is far m very much outdated. The police uh, they seem to be operating in the kind of in the kind of mindset that they had when they were set up by the colonialists, when they were set up to service the colonial masters and not to serve the interests of the collective, the interests of the Nigerian citizens.